My guest today is Elizabeth Graham. Elizabeth, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Tell me, what do you do? So I am a global black belt for Microsoft. Global black belt. Holy cow. Yes. What does that mean? <laughs> that means that we do uh, deep technology with Azure. Um, so we go deep into the technology with Azure. We go out to different customers. Um, we uh, give them either an architecture session or um, do some workshops. Um, really explaining though how the uh, arch how the technology, a specific technology, will work in their okay. scenarios. So the word black belt is kind of a, uh, a metaphor, uh, in the sense that like in the martial arts, black belt indicates yeah. that you have this expertise yes. in that martial art, and you have an expertise in something. Yep. What is uh, it? What's something? So a lot of it is serverless technologies, mm -hmm. but uh, logic apps and integration is my background. Let's talk about logic apps. Okay. They're they're pretty fun, right? They are. So what, what is Logic App? So uh, really at the end of the day, Logic App is system integration, right? Mm -hmm. So you're co you're connecting two systems together, um, whether that is an on-premise uh, system mm -hmm. or something in the cloud, um, even external systems such as uh, Salesforce or uh, you know Dynamics 365. It doesn't have to even be within Azure. Okay. Um, so we're really just say, taking the messages from those systems and saying here is one message, and we're going to do a little bit of business logic on it, mm -hmm. um, some workflow, and then putting it into another system. Okay. And he says it doesn't have to be part of Azure, which sort of implies that logic apps, them, that logic apps themselves are hosted in Azure. They are. So uh -huh. Logic Apps is uh, is within Azure. Mm -hmm. um, it is again a workflow. Uh -huh. um, kind of, it looks similar to a Visio diagram in that it has boxes and um, lines that go to the different actions. Okay. Um, but and so it is. It's a workflow, a business workflow. Okay. Um, and uh, when we talk about this integration and getting messages from one another, are, are we talking about batch processing or real time processing or both? Um, I would say it's more real-time processing mm -hmm. is would be the use case you can do batching. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's av it's absolutely a use case, but for the most part, we see real-time transactions. All right, and what what advantage does Logic Apps give you over, say, just writing code to say get the data from here and push it over to here? Well, uh, so the first part is the adapters, right? The system integration. What we have are called adapters. And so we have written the code for you to actually make the connections. Okay. Right. So, uh, for example, today uh, we've been I've been struggling with a Cosmos DB connection. Should okay. be quick and simple, but we're using JavaScript, which is not my first language, programming language. Um, so we're struggling with it. Well, oh, so you're not really using Logic Apps. You're writing some custom yes, code. Yes, we today. are. Yep, we're writing custom code. But within a Logic App, I could quickly just within a few keystrokes, right, type in Cosmos DB. Um, say what is the Cosmos DB that I want to get, you know, want to hit, give it either a URL string, or maybe if it's part of my Azure connection, I can just, you know, uh, use a drop down box to actually um, pull it, pull the information out. Um, and then it will save that information, right? Um, I don't have to actually configure the connection string. And if anything changes in the future, the Logic Apps team will actually change the connection uh, adapter, right? Rather than me having to go in and change my code. Oh, meaning if the the interface to Logic Apps changes, no, then oh, the no, adapter the Cosmos itself. DB. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. That's what I meant to say. The yeah. interface to Cosmos DB changes, then Logic Apps will change the yep. way that they connect to it, and yes. your code is abstracted right. away from that. That's exactly it. So oh, there's okay. that. That's the very first piece of it. The second piece of it is, um, it it is just a lot of connection points, a lot of um, uh, you know, very little code, but it's. Um, a vi very visual step processing. Okay. Right? Is it a, so? There's a graphical designer. There is. There's a graphical design again. Yeah, it, it looks similar to Visio. It's not Visio. Okay. Um, but that's just the closest relation I can give to it. All right. So Visio. that's that's how you get data in and out is through these these, these graphical steps that yep. you can do. And uh, what about the workflow part of it? How does yep. that work? So the workflow part has so really so a logic app really is triggers and actions, right? Okay. Let's define those. Trigger so, is a what? So the trigger is the starting point, right? You have to have something that says the logic app is going to start. Okay. And it could be, so um, you can have an HTTP request, right? So you can send an HTTP message to the logic app mm -hmm. and that will start it. Okay. Um, you could say, you know what? The logic app is going to start every three minutes. Um, and that's a manual trigger. 
mm-hmm. um, like kind of like a you know a scheduled task and okay. Windows type thing. Um, you could do things such as a service bus queuing, right? So and it will actually go out and pull a service bus. So and say, you drop Are there a any? message onto that bus and then it'll fire off a, a logic app. It will. So it will actually pull for the messages on the service bus. However, you can also use Event Grid, right, on top of Service Bus. And Event Grid um, is a it's similar service bus, but it's the notification. So it will like tap the logic app and say, okay, there's messages on service bus, mm-hmm. go pick them up. So you can still have that instant picking up oh, for service bus. Okay. Um, but it does, it will pull for storage accounts. Again, you can use event grid there as well. Um, if you do like an on-premise SQL server, it will call a stored procedure or do mm-hmm. a SQL query. Again, and you can set it every three minutes, 15 seconds. I see. Um, you can set that value. So that's, but that's the trigger. That's All the right. starting point. And then the next thing is you have actions. And so actions can be, um, it can be, you know, we're going to take one message format and convert it to another message format, right? Um, We have that ability. Um, You can also do things such as an if statement, right? Or a where loop, Hmm. right? And each one is actually considered an action. And then the last piece is the outbound, right? Sending the messages out of logic apps, which is actually, they're can still considered actions, even though they are connections as well. Hmm. Um, but really you have a trigger and then a series of actions. And really the, the logic app, um, it does paralyze everything. Uh, so, well, really it, it, so it's a set of tasks. So mm-hmm. um, that has a run after each time. So it says, okay, we have a trigger. Okay. Um, the next step might be, uh, you know, to take the message and uh, validate the schema, validate the message. Oh, make sure right? that, that it's expected format. Yep. And so when you look at that action, um, there is a code view. You, so you, if you wanted to look at the code. Oh, is that C Sharp code? JSON. JSON. So JSON. Oh, okay. So not really code, schema. it's more configuration. It is. Right. Yep. Um, but you can see what the run after is. So you can see, okay, the run after is actually going to be running after the trigger. Okay. And so, and that would actually start another task in the background. Yes. Um, and then, you know, the, the for loop will actually, um, you know, you might do a for loop to insert each item into Cosmos DB. Okay, right? makes sense. Like 200 items. And actually it will, so it will go through that for loop, but each one, um, it will kick off an individual task up to 20 tasks at a time. So it's going to run 20 at a time, 20 at a time hmm, okay. um, to actually insert them into it. Um, now you can change that so that it can do it one at a time if you want to. Okay. Um, but really keeping it where it's paralyzed is really the right. benefit of logic apps. Yeah, unless you need some sort of sequential logic. Yes. If order is important, yep. for example. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then and then those, those uh, when you say inserting into a Cosmos TV, that also is the connector. Yep. It's using that as yep. well. So you don't have to write any code or connections. You yes. just configure it to do that. Yep. Um, what about uh, uh, some kind of uh, waiting for steps, waiting for some data to come in in the middle of this workflow? Does it Will it handle that? Um, it does. So you can uh, you can do a sequential convoy is what that's called. Okay. Um, so for example, what you can say is um, we're going to receive message A, mm-hmm. and then we're going to go ahead and wait for message B to come in, okay. and then we'll continue processing. Um, you know, you're going to use Service Bus to do that processing to kind of uh, hold the messages into wait. Um, but you can actually, you can do that. But sequential convoy, it's a common integration term, but we can't yeah. do that in okay. logic apps. I, I bring this up because uh, I used to do some biz talk work. Okay. And sometimes we did, and I did some workflow foundation stuff, which yeah. I'm not even sure that's the whole thing. But, <laughs> uh, yes. but one of the challenges was waiting for something to come in, which might be a, uh, a manager clicking on a link in an email that says approve this expense report or something like that. And, uh, I, yes. and I wonder if it's if oh. logic apps are a solution for that sort of thing. Some of these yep. really long running workflows, which could actually last days or weeks. Yes. Yep. So you can actually, uh, it, it's a long running workflow for up to 90 days. Hmm. Um, so you can send a message out, right? Again, waiting on an email okay. response, um, send a request out, you know, uh, and receive a response back. But um, it's up to 90 days. And then, yeah, the workflow will continue processing. Okay. And it continues, when you say continue processing, it doesn't, it doesn't stay in memory that whole time, does it? Um, you know what? It, it does not, but uh, you're not, so you're not paying for it when it is in memory. You're only paying for when the actions and the triggers are called. Ah, so okay. uh, even if it does stay in memory, uh, it does not matter. Well, that's interesting. The, the, so the pricing, describe the pricing plan for me. So, yeah, so the pricing plan is really, ba- it's it's a serverless technology. Okay. Um, in that you have, so the trigger is, 
um, a, you know, a price, it's, you know, zero, 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 one, right, okay. on pennies. Right. Um, and then- So like 10 for a penny or something yeah. like that. So yeah. then for each action item, um, you do, you get, you know, ch- charged penny, you know, small amounts of pennies. Okay. Um, or zero, 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 one, right? So at okay. the end of the day, you know, your logic app, when you call it, it it's very, very minimal. Um, but, you know, it does mean you have to be considerate of where of the where loops because each time it goes through the where loop, it's calling an action. Yep. Um, so 200 will be, you know, it could end up being $2 um, or, you know, uh, it's less than that, probably more like 20 cents. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, but that's how it is. So it really is now we do have two connectors um, that are called enterprise connectors. And those are a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. They're okay. SAP and MSMQ. Okay. Um, so, you know, those are the only other two. The other piece of it that we have um, is called an integration account. So if you're doing EDI with uh-huh. Logic Apps, um, you need to have trading partners and um, maps for those trading partners. Okay, so um, transformations. Just, yep, yep. And so and that that's an additional charge on top of that as well, just to handle the EDI piece. Okay, yeah, I never liked doing EDI when I was a biz talk guy. Yeah, <laughs> well, so I live in the Midwest, so uh-huh. I have done lots of EDI. Okay, fine. We always well. say the, the West and East Coast does less EDI. I did not know that. I, grew, I yes. lived in the Midwest as well. That's probably why I got oh, stuck no. doing that's, so that's much exactly of it. exactly it, yep. <laughs> um, is it always, uh, so all the development is done through the Azure portal, is that right? Um, not not always. Uh, so you, there is a designer. that's where the designer group, is, though, right? Th- there's actually a designer that you can use through Visual Studio. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. So you, there's actually an SDK that you can uh, download an extension in Visual Studio, mm. um, and you can actually do the development there um, through. And it's a designer view. They also have an extension in VS Code that just came out at Ignite, oh. um, but that is not a GUI view. It's all the code behind view. Oh, so okay. it's a, the JSON document, but you can still develop through that as well. Oh, okay. So that mm-hmm. uh, if I develop it in Visual Studio or in Visual Studio Code, then I have a, a local artifact that I can s- check into source control. Yes. Uh, what if I develop it in um, uh, something in the browser, in the Azure yep. portal? Is there a way that I can manage that source control? There is. So you would uh, create an ARM template, okay. right? And you put that ARM template into there. And we have a tool. It's a Logic App template um, that you can use with ARM client with an, another tool that you can install called ARM t- client. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will actually grab the, uh, all the code from the, uh, from the logic app, the JSON code, strip out the API connections. So all the, so if you have a connection to a storage account, you don't want your storage account key right in that template you want to because you don't want it in yeah. source control so nobody can right. see right that's it. exactly and, it. and also you may want to deploy it sometimes to the test environment yep. sometimes to production that's exactly it and so it will strip out that value so it's oh. in there it will add it as a pra- you know you can add it as a parameter if I you see. do want them to you know copy and paste or you could go afterwards and paste that in there mm. um, but yeah so it will strip out all of those keys um, and then you you're left with just the arm cli- the uh, arm template that you can then use to deploy all right, this is a pretty cool technology, isn't it? It is. is it's there fun. Some, it, it, it sounds like fun. <laughs> is there anything we haven't talked about about Logic Apps that we should? Um, oh, goodness. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I, I think we covered a lot of it. Okay. Um, is, where Let's say uh, people want to get started. Where's the first place they should go? Um, well, I mean, the first place to go, you know, might be, um, Azure doc, the Azure documentation. Okay. Right. Uh, so we do have several tutorials out there on how like to tutorials. get going. Yep. Um, we have that. I know that there are, uh, actually there is a conference, um, that is done. Uh, it was done twice a year last year. Um, the last one being in London mm-hmm. and there are lots of videos from that conference. It's called Integrate. It oh, was done I was by, hoping I was going to go to London. I guess I'm watching uh, videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's lots of videos, uh, but there's, it was hosted by BizTalk360, which is a partner of ours. Okay. And so it's out. All the videos are out there um, online, as well as the slide decks as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another good place to go. And then, um, actually, there is a uh, workshop that has a Logic App piece that we, that myself and uh, my team has developed. It does functions, Logic Apps, and Event Grid. Hmm. Um, and and that's you, available online. Yep, uh, on GitHub under. Uh, so if you do a search for coding with Sasquatch, which is my team's Sasquatch. GitHub, <laughs> I like it. and then uh, our workshop is actually serverless ninjas. 
<laughs> okay. And so you can Sasquatch ninjas. Yeah. <laughs> you take yes. Pictures. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. Yes. So the, the the entire team right is this is coding with Sasquatch, and then the serverless team picked up ninjas a bit. So <laughs> yes. But yeah, and there's a, actually a, a video that goes along with. Um, how you would set it up. There's a demo, there's hands-on lab uh, with step-by-step -step instructions as well. But um, but also then the uh, Azure Docs has a bit. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining this YouTube video. And I hope Um, I will admit I walk away with everyone being